Hello, welcome to a photography video. My name is Josh Lewis and I'm here to talk about photography. Um, I was browsing through my YouTube channel, as one does, keeping an eye on things, and I realised that most of the videos I've been posting are geared towards a digital workflow based on post-processing, so a lot of Photoshop tutorials and things I'm, I'm finding on the Mac to make life easier for everybody. So I realised that I haven't, even though um, I was talking to a guy um, in a pub the other day, and he also has photography, and he's like, oh, which do you prefer, digital or film? Uh, I said, well, um, I prefer film um, for several reasons. And that made me realise that I haven't actually done a video, really, about film photography, apart from a little camera review that was done on Keynote, um, which I don't think was up to the mark, even though it's got a few views and it's a bit helpful. So I thought I'd do an actual person-to-person -person, um, video, get my face off the computer for a change, and just talk about film photography. So I'm here today to talk about my latest um, film camera purchase, which I purchased a few weeks ago. Uh, this bad boy cost me £15 from eBay, and it came from the wonderful country of Ukraine. I can tell you that it has, I'm just reading my notes here, a triplet 43 f4 40mm 3 element lens. And like it, um, the other toy cameras I own, this is actually a glass lens, which is very nice. It's fully manual, um, so you can control aperture shutter speed and obviously the ISO of your film is there as well. Shutter speeds range from 1 15th to 1 20th of a second and it has a bulb function for longer exposures as well. It does have a hot shoe to PC flash connection which is an older version so you will need a connector to go to that um, thing and it has a tripod mount as well. Um, so yes, let's have a look at it. This is, this is, this is the box um, it came in, so uh, this will tell you what the camera is. It's a Snema 8M, or if you or is it a photo camera, or if you prefer the Russian, which was where it's from, uh, it's native to the USSR, and it was made there, which is evidented by the manual, which is all in Russian. So a nice Russian manual. I have no idea what any of this says. I've just managed to look at the pretty diagrams. Now the camera itself, um, I have no thing to do a little test video before I started this. It did come in this lovely faux leather case which says Lomo on it. Um, so this is very nice, very handy, you know, it's got a neck strap and everything. Um, so yes, very good. Um, before I show you the camera, um, people might be wondering what kind of film I use and say, oh, well, what film, film do you recommend? Um, I currently am working my way through two piles of stock that I have at the moment. They're both black and white films and they're both ISO 400 because I bought them earlier this year and the weather wasn't too great. I took um, uh, one set of film to Prague. Well, in fact, we don't have to both, both of these films to Prague, and they're both wonderful and fantastic film. Uh, the first is a 35mm Codex, Kodak, Codex, <laughs> Kodak 400TX. Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic film. Really nice, really easy to use, obviously quite easy to develop, because it's black and white, nice and cheap, and you can pick them off very cheaply off the internet. Same goes for this. This is medium format, which I use in my Holger and Lubital 2. This is Ilford HP5 Plus, and also this is a very nice medium format film. Um, again, it's got a good tonal range, uh, good, good tones, and it makes some really, really nice prints. Um, so yes, I recommend um, either of those films if you're doing black and white stuff. So let's have a look at the camera. This is it, very small, very lightweight, um, and very, I don't know, it just makes me happy looking at it. So let's come up closer and have a look at it. I'm gonna stand up for this so I can come closer to the camera. On the bottom you have your standard tripod mount, which is very useful if you're doing um, long exposures at night time. And you can also see that it was made in the USSR. Um, on the back, no, let's, go, let's go to the top. On the top you have your film Rewind, rewind button which comes up and lets you rewind your film. You also have a shutter button as well which obviously doesn't take a photo just yet and I'll explain why when we go to the front. This is the lovely front of the camera. You've got the name Smema 8M uh, camera. Um, you've got the viewfinder here which is hooked up to the viewfinder at the back which means you can look through and compose your images nicely. On the front, um, we have this little dial here, which is very important, this one. This is actually the shutter cock, uh, not like a penis in any way. This you actually bring down to that position there where it clicks shut, and that allows you to take a photo and it will spring back into the upright position. 
that's what you need to do to get the camera ready to take a photo. One thing I will say about the shutter cocking mechanism is that if you leave it cocked down for a long period of time when you're not using the camera, it can damage the mechanism. So always uncock it when you finish using it. Um, what should we talk about next? We'll talk about shutter speed next. Um, shutter speed, you have all your speeds here, which I mentioned, range from uh, 15 to 250, and you've also got a bulb function as well. And as you can see, this red dot moves as well. So that's how you set shutter speed. You can also be set by the weather. So you've got these dials here which show like sunny, partial sun, partial cloud, cloud and like thunderstorm. Um, so these can be quite a good indication if you're not quite sure, you know, if it's sunny, how fast your shutter speed should be exactly. So it just helps you get that perfect exposure and it helps not to waste film. Uh, users of other toy cameras uh, like the Holger will be very familiar with this layout. Um, what should we have a look at next? We'll look at focusing. Focusing goes from one meter to infinity, and that just involves turning the main dial completely. Uh, this also uses um, diagrams as well. So you can see uh, one meter there is that, that that's actually a person, and then if we um, turn it around, we get to a group of people, and then if we turn it around again, you get to a bigger group of people, and turn it around again, you get to infinity and like buildings and stuff. So again, very helpful if you're not quite sure how far away um, you should be focusing for and um, the diagrams just make it a little bit easier for you so that your photos are more than likely going to be in focus. It does have quite a good focus threshold so don't worry about getting it perfectly in focus. You know, if, if somebody is like 1.2 meters away, don't try and get the 1.2 down on the dial, just go for 1 meter and it will probably end up being in focus. Aperture is changed by this inner ring here. I know this might be a bit difficult to see, but this inner ring here does move. You use it by set using the um, ASA numbers here. This uses the old, I think it's DIN. It says DIN format, but I think it's got another name that I've forgotten. But anyway, um, these relate to the ISO use on most films today, like 400 and 100 and 200. So, for example, let's say if you've got 400 speed, speed film like I have, um, set the dial to the um, relevant number down here and it will give you an aperture value which is in red here. This is giving me f11. Um, obviously if you kind of know what you're doing and you've got a shutter speed that you know will work and you know how the um, interaction between shutter speed and aperture works you can be a bit more creative so you can like um, speed up your shutter speed slightly to open the aperture a bit more to get a, a, like a shallower depth of field. So um, if you know what you're doing you can play around with this and um, because it is like a fully manual camera. So on the face of it, it's very simple, very easy to use. The film counter is on the back here. I haven't talked about the back yet, and I'm coming up to my 10 minutes. So this is the back, this is the film counter. Uh, unlike others, it won't just move across a little bit to show you've moved on to the next frame. It needs to do a full rotation back and then go to the number that was after it. So if you're going down from 24, rotate it all the way down to get to the next line, which means it's 23, or 25, depending on which way you're going. And that's pretty much all there is to this camera. Um, it takes 35mm film. That's, that's what the inside looks like. Very much like a camera. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, so I just thought I'd talk about a camera for a change, because I do videos about photography, but I haven't really spoken properly about a camera before. Um, so I'm going to do a few more of these, I think, and just uh, maybe run through my... A collection of cameras and talk about you know how good they are how little how bad they are I haven't actually taken any photos on this thing yet despite having it for a couple of weeks which is very, very unusual for me um, but I'm um, just waiting for the right moment to use it but yeah when I do I'll post a review of it and I'll let you know what I think um, if you do like this video you can find me on Twitter and Facebook where I talk about photography related things and post some interesting links to news stories and stuff like that um, I'm also on the Google Plus network, you can find that by using my email address joshlewisphotog at gmail.com Links to pretty much all my profiles will be in the description below and if you like this video and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button up above. So thank you very much for watching, my name is Josh Lewis and stay tuned for more photography stuff. Thank you.